So in this video, we're going to take a look at how to dynamically drive a joint chain via a spline IK and a dynamic hair curve. Uh, what I have here very quickly is I have uh, polygon geometry. And you can see I'll turn off x-ray joints real quick to be able to see that a bit better. There is my polygon geometry. Um, turn back on x-ray joints. You'll notice that I also have, I'll turn off display polygons, I have a joint chain here right now. And here's my hypergraph setup. I've got my joints, five joints, and one polycube, which has been extruded into this hair piece. So what I'm going to do now is first I'm going to set up a curve that I can use along this. Uh, to do that, I'm going to go into the Curves tab and grab the EP Curve tool. Uh, to draw this out correctly, I'm going to hold down V for snap to point, and I'm going to click on each one of my joints. And that will create a curve point at each one of those joints. Here in the hypergraph, now you'll notice that I have a curve. Now this curve, if I was to move it, you know, it's literally just a curve, but we're going to put it back into place for right now. So this curve um, is going to eventually be controlling our entire joint chain. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the curve first. I want to test its dynamic attributes. And uh, to do that, I'm going to go into the Dynamics menu set. And under Hair, uh, I'm going to choose Make Selected Curves Dynamic. Uh, doing this will turn my curve into a dynamic curve. So when I do that, I bring my hypergraph back over here. You'll notice I have a whole bunch of new nodes created. I've got my joints and my cube, which I had before. I have my original curve here, curve one. But I've also created a hair system, a group for this with a follicle, and another hair system output curve with this very important curve two, which is going to be our dynamic curve that we're going to be using in just a minute. So when I have this set up, uh, I'm going to set my timeline here uh, at about 200 frames and scale this out so I can test it. And I hit play, and you notice really not much happens. Um, nothing is moving here. Uh, and the reason for that is actually because my follicle and hair system right now um, are being sort of trapped in place at both the beginning of the curve and at the end. It's like having a root for your hair at both ends. And I, of course, just want my root at the bottom side. So I'm going to select uh, my follicle. That is the follicle for the hair. And I'm going to say in the attribute editor, instead of point locking at both ends, let's point lock at just the base. And now when I hit play, you'll notice this curve is going to start to flex a little bit here. The problem is it's not going very, very far. It's just going to kind of hold up right there. Well, in the hair system shape node, the reason why this isn't going much further is because my stiffness scale needs to be altered. Right now, it's at a selected value of 1, meaning the hair is entirely stiff. I'm going to slide this down a little bit. And you can see I can pull this down and set my selected value about almost uh, 0.4 there. And I've got a little graph. And by editing this graph, I can essentially change how the stiffness works across the whole hair. And this is a value that I kind of like here. I've got a nice tapering curve to it. So now I've got the curve working dynamically, but I don't have this curve uh, pulling the joint chain with it. So to set that up, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a spline IK. Now let me make this window smaller so we can see this a bit better here. I just want to keep this all out and open. Um, to create the spline IK, uh, normally that would create a curve with this uh, uh, onto the joint. So we create a spline IK and a curve along with it. But we already have a curve. So uh, in setting this up, uh, I'm going to go to the animation module and go to uh, skeleton, uh, IK spline handle tool, and I'll go to the attributes. If I was to reset the tool settings, you'll notice I'll have auto create curve and auto simplify curve here turned on. And since I already have a curve, I do not want either of those two options activated. So the important one is 
turning off auto create curve. Now I click on my uh, base joint here, my joint one, and then I click on the tip joint, which is joint five, and then to say that I want the dynamic curve, which is uh, curve number two here, to control that, I just hold down shift and I click on that curve. And that's gonna create this setup. Now when I hit play, you notice my joint chain follows along with it. So, now that we've got our joint chain pulling along this curve, um, I can go back, I'm gonna turn on my polygon object here so I can see this. I will select my base, uh, then shift select my object, and I'm gonna go into my um, skin, uh, choose bind skin, smooth bind, and when I hit play now, my geometry is gonna come along with my curve. And that's how you can make a dynamic joint chain to control things like tails or antlers or ears or any of these other secondary driven elements. Thank you, this has been Andrew Klein. For more videos, please check out andrewkline.net.